Right, let's have a look at this question then. So, first of all, four methods. Explain them, don't just state them. That could be used by an audit firm to reduce litigation claims, okay? So, I think the way I'd start off with this, I'd say, uh, you know, why do you want to avoid, why do you want to reduce litigation? So, the reason for reducing litigation, just a brief introduction, I'd say, well, it's due to uh, bad publicity. And the financial, obviously, the financial effect. And the financial effect could even be the closing down of the whole firm if we do something wrong, you know, as, as has been proven in big, big cases. So it's a massively important thing. Four things, then remember, we need to explain them. So you could say, right, well, first of all, to make sure that our clients, uh, well, to, to make sure that we aren't liable to anybody, we need to get good clients in the first place. Client screening procedures. To explain that, really we don't want anybody with going concern issues because that's when you tend to get sued where you said everything was fine and it wasn't. It turned out that they weren't a going concern. So ideally, nobody with any going concern issues. And basically, you only accept a client if the risk can be reduced to an acceptably low level, okay? And that's also given our resources. So given how many resources we've got, obviously the more you have, the more risk you can take. So could you reduce it to uh, an acceptably low level? That's the first one then. The second one is to get a good engagement letter, okay? It's a, that's the contract. You might even want to use the word that's the contract between you and the client. And within that contract then, what you want to make sure is first of all that it's updated at least annually, even during the audit if necessary, uh, and that the client is fully aware, it's this expectation gap, isn't it? Fully aware of the auditor's responsibility and the scope of the audit. What is it that we actually audit? Because if they're aware of what it is we audit and what it is that we are responsible for, then we're less likely to be sued in the future because they know what we should and shouldn't have done. A third thing would be how we actually perform the audit. And not only how we perform it, but make sure that people can see we've performed, we performed it well. Because if they can see we've performed it well, then we're less likely to be sued, aren't we? So how do I mean perform it well? Well, that's obvious. Adhere to ISAs. Okay? But not only that, we need documentation that proves this. So documentation that proves adherence to ISAs, which means that we planned the audit correctly, that we got sufficient and appropriate evidence that we looked at ethics that we reviewed that sort of thing okay notice what i'm doing here i'm not just stating i'm explaining i'm getting into reasonable depth not too much depth though because you just don't have time and then finally the issue of quality control okay that we have quality control and the things to mention about quality control are always that it's firm-wide, that it's throughout everything in our organisation, but also, it's also on the individual engagement, you know, that we have reviews and consultations and that sort of thing. Um, and you say, look, this is basically like our own internal control that ensures we perform an audit well and therefore less likely to um, have litigation against us. So, that's that. Part B, six marks. Assess the potential implications for the profession, so not for the client, for the profession, if we sign a limited uh, liability agreement. So if we limit our liability, what would the effect be on the profession? Well, I think, first of all, if we have less liability, then what would happen to audit quality? Hopefully you can see that audit quality may go down. And audit quality may go down because the financial consequences of a bad audit are less. 
So it's only human nature to not try so hard. So that would be one thing. Uh, if the audit quality goes down, then what's the other effect on the profession? Hopefully you can see that users will have less confidence in the audit. So if they have less confidence in the audit, they will play, place less reliance on the audit and that your opinion becomes less credible and therefore the profession becomes less credible. And because of that, audit fees will probably drop because we are taking less risk and there's always, therefore, less return. And then finally, a bit of a tricky one, this one. Finally, um, big firm bias. It might be, if this was the case, that big firms have bigger resources. So they can have bigger liabilities. And if they've got bigger liability agreements, then that gives them an unfair advantage in getting clients. A small firm would say, look, you know, I, could, I can't afford to have uh, such a big liability, so mine will be quite small. And so therefore, firms might, uh, clients might want to go to big firms. All right, that's what you want to look at. Hope it helps.